People have always argued over the age of the Earth, but have you ever gone into in-depth reasons to support your beliefs and see what you know about the subject? I have recently conducted research to, on determining the age of the observable universe and the Earth, and have studied the results carefully. The age of the universe is determined and backed by radiometric dating, mitochondrial Eve, and star distances. And I hope that through this information, you will come to believe that the Earth and the universe are at least millions of years old. Now, see, everything is made up of atoms. You yourself are made up of atoms, but you probably already knew that. What you may not have known is that your individual atoms are made up of protons, neutrons, and electrons. Now, each atom has its own specific element identity, and that is determined by the number of protons it has. But two atoms that have the same number of protons, making them the same element, can have different numbers of neutrons, which makes them isotopes. And according to the book, Earth's Surface and History by Richard M. Renaboog, published by Salem Press, these isotopes are sometimes unstable. When these isotopes are unstable, they need to give off some of their particles in their attempt to become a more stable particle. And this process is known as radioactive decay. Now, radioactive decay occurs over long lengths of time. And according to Age of the Earth, by William L. Newman on the website scienceviews.com, we call this period of time a half-life. We named it for this because a half-life is specific to each element. Each element has a different half-life, but this determines how long it takes for half of the substance to decay. Now, Nola Taylor Red's article, How Old is Earth, from the website space.com, says that we take minerals from asteroids and rocks here on Earth, and we look at what elements could have once been radioactive in there. So knowing that, and then knowing the specific half-life of these radioactive elements, we can trace back by an assumption of how much we thought was there and how much we have now to determine how long ago it first began dec decaying. And using all of this information, we can come to the belief that the Earth and the universe, at least the rocks that were created there, which we are to assume was created around the same time that the universe was, are four and a half billion years old. My next evidence is the mitochondrial Eve. The mitochondrial Eve can prove humans are older than the young Earth believes. See, there are two main theories for the age of the Earth and the age of the universe. One theory holds that the Earth is a couple thousand years old, and the other that I'm telling you holds that it is millions or billions of years old. Now, we call this process mitochondrial Eve because what we do is we take DNA from the mitochondria. DNA is chosen from the mitochondria according to Ben Lomikanen and Mitochondrial Eve and the Effective Politics of Human Ancestry, published in Science, that we use this DNA from the mitochondria because it relatively doesn't change, save for a handful of genes here that change pretty rapidly over time. And this rapid change over time, I say, happens over thousands of years. But using this, we take that DNA from two humans and we give them a degree of relation to each other. It means we can trace back about how long ago it was by generation by generation that they had a common ancestor, that someone way back in their family line was related or was the same person. And using this and what we know about migration patterns, according to mitochondrial Eve, mother of all humans lived 200,000 years ago by Rice University researchers on the website Science Daily, we have determined that humans have been around here for about 200,000 years. And what I told you earlier, there are two beliefs, one that is a couple thousand years old and one that is millions or billions of years old. With this evidence, we can go ahead and debunk the couple of thousands of years. Finally, we can determine the age of the Earth by star distances or other heavenly bodies. When you look at something, what you're seeing is light reflected back into your eyes. When you look at the floor, that's because light from the ceiling lights comes down, hits it, and then goes back into your eye. This is everything that you see. That's, that's how sight works. When you look up at the sky, what you're seeing is light coming off from stars or light coming from our own sun and hitting the moon and coming back into your eyes. And now, according to NASA's website in an article titled The Galaxy Next Door, the Andromeda Galaxy is two and a half million light years away. Now, a light year, by definition, is a distance that light travels, because light has a speed, it's a difference that light travels in a year. So when we say that the Andromeda Galaxy is two and a half million light years away, that means when we look up and we're able to see it in the sky, that light 
traveled two and a half million years to get here. Now, that means it had to have started giving off light at least two and a half million years ago for us to be able to look up and see it now. Radiometric dating, mitochondrial Eve, and star distances all point to the actual age of the universe and the Earth being billions of years old. The age of the Earth is certainly something interesting to know, but it should be used to reinforce your beliefs on religion or creation rather than interfere with them. You don't need to take these and say, all right, what do I need to change about what I think to fit this? You need to take this and say, this is what I know about how old the universe is. Now, how do I use that to fit into what I already knew about creation?